All I want an ember. Get a little stick. Pop me ember out. And that's all I need. And I know I'm gonna get a fire now by friction. Who's just seeing that day? I get me a little charred cloth because I'm excited. I'm a bit cocky at the minute. Relaxed. Nice and relaxed. I'll get me nest. I have some in my desk. Where is EJ with you now? Come on. Where is EJ? It's <laughs> recording it, yeah. Where is EJ? He's just finishing his coffee. Where is he? It's been half an hour already with his coffee. Yeah, he's going to be back in two hours. And it's exactly the same method. Start a fire by friction, no messing about. Part of protection is yourself. Whether that be if you're coming down in a plane, you're in a small situation, that plane might go on fire, you need to get away from it. You're being attacked by the enemy, you broke contact, you need to protect yourself, so we need to get away from it. Now, what you're going to need to start thinking about is everyone thinks that when you talk about survival, you talk about everyone thinks about build a shelter straight away. I need to think about first aid, medical. What's the point of me building a shelter if I'm bleeding out? I've just come down in a plane crash, I've been shot by the enemy in the shoulder or took a bullet to the leg. Am I going to start building a shelter or am I going to do first aid first? So that's the next thing I think about. And I'm going to move up the chain under protection. I'm going to 
start thinking about my clothing. This is my first shelter. Clothing is my first shelter. And as a new monarch, we teach to remember about clothing, to, uh, to keep it working, to keep it serviceable. And it's colder, that's what we want. Like safe standards is to make keep your clothes clean. And I know it's hard to keep your clothes clean, but when you're operating in a jungle environment, you're always damp. When you put the time to get in a river, clean them off and then dry out, that's what you want to do. Because if you're not cleaning your clothes off, if you've been in the jungle before, your clothes start rotting on you and they fall apart. I can tell you that from first hand experience by spending three months in the jungle in Sierra Leone. Your clothes will fall off if you're not cleaning properly. The next part of cold the new monarch is oh, avoid overheating. So when we're building our shelters, I can see some of you getting a bit warm, taking your jacket off, tying them around your waist. Avoid overheating. When you're building shelters, dress down. Because if you start sweating, what are you losing? Water. You're losing water, so you're going to dress down. Alright, so you're going to avoid, avoid overheating. Help and loose layers. Instead of having your jackets fall all the way up to your neck, undo them. Let your body breathe because you don't want to sweat. I can say it's all about saving your sweat. All right, we don't want to start using all our water up. D for dry. Whenever you can, dry your clothing out. Get round the fire and dry your clothing out. If you're wet and cold in an Arctic or cold environment, you're going to start going down with hypothermia. So that's what I said, this is our first shelter. Try and dry out all the time. The next part of the new modern colder is E. Examine. Examine your clothing. All right, what am I examining for? examining for so the e for example what am i looking for on my clothing damages irish pennants damages, open pockets tears broken stuff and then the next part of cold is r for repair i'm going to get me sewing kit out of my kit i'll get my first aid kit i'll start repairing it if i haven't got any of that i'll do some materials on the ground and i can get dumped into van some spikes is it agave have you all seen what you can do with agave you can take the end of agave off and pull the needle off the end of it and it's a lot of strength in it you can use stuff like a stitch and all that and that's my first bit of clothing from there i'm going to move on to shelter dj's told you put shelves over there you can use primitive shelters or if you've got man-made stuff you can use what minutes you get issues or you might take out the backpack tents tarp so on and so forth so let's have a little look at it he's doing it like as well go on straight in so there. show me on long ways that's it you're gonna need to roll yeah go on then let's see you see you it kind of tastes like chicken skin. I've had oh, yeah, it does. Do you like it? Did you nice, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Happy day. Yeah. Right, so just get it nice and close to the flame. Okay, guys, if you want points on this, I've got to witness you eating these crickets, right? You ready? Wait, I'm cooking them a bit longer. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's looking nice and golden brown. Just get a little bit more here. No, it's like it's still rippling. Oh, it's got white stuff as well. Okay, and the tip towards the end as well. Yeah. That be it. Okay, you ready? Oh, does someone have to watch this part of it? No, you don't have to. Oh, okay. Who's ready? Boom. How do you feel? Just grab it and pull it down. It should just taste like chicken, doesn't it? Right, what I'm going to show you now is the essential items of equipment I go out here with in the field. So the first thing I've got is a nice, decent, robust day sack. Good thing about this, it carries me equipment as well. And I've got to fill some more pockets on here if I need to pick up even foraging, even picking up bits of wood, bits of dry grass. I can stuff it all in here, but it's a decent, robust uh, day sack. What I do first as well is put a liner in there. The reason why this is for if it's raining, it's going to keep me stuff as dry as possible. That's the first thing I'll have in my day sack. Other things I carry on me is a waterproof jacket. All the time I don't fail, I'll always have this in here. In a bag. Hat and gloves, get me hat on now because my head's getting a bit cold. Bought a carry hat, set of gloves, and what I do then is I put them in a waterproof bag as well. Reason being, if it rains, if I'm river crossing, so on and so forth. I know it's going to be nice and dry. The dog ran off here. He's going to end up getting kicked by a horse. <laughs> yeah, so there's hat and gloves what I carry on me as well. Other thing I carry is a spare pair of socks, already waterproof. If I'm going through rivers or whatever, I'm going to change the socks to get the back to being dry. What else I've got as well is a little gas cooker, a little gas stove. And my tin. 
So I need to make myself a nice little coffee. I've got it to hand. And like I said, this just for hill walking. This just being prepared. If I get lost, then I'm out here for a while. I know I'm going to sustain myself. And obviously, a little bit of coffee. I'm going to make myself a nice little coffee in a minute. Get them in there. Always want to carry on me as well. There's three forms of fire lighting. So, flint and steel, waterproof matches, and a lighter. And what I'll do, I'll carry them on my purse and in my pocket. To go with that, what else I carry as well is charred cloth. And I carry some fuel blocks, as you can see here. Nice little fuel box, hexamine fuel box. I'll go on my day sack. I'll always carry a knife on me as well. That'll just go on the back of me. If I need to chop up wood to make some traps if I'm hunting or trying to catch some animals, I've got a day. I need to cut string to make shelters. I've got it. And obviously, a big one for me is... I've come out here to do a bit of hill walk and navigational training. What I'll carry on me is my map of the area I'm working on. Obviously, a map case. That map case can double up and pick up water. So if I need to collect water, I've got a, a water collection device there. So I've got that. And I've got a compass with a whistle on it, so if I get injured, I can't scream, I can blow a whistle and hopefully get saved. What else I've got in as, as well as a magnifying glass, so if the heat's out, the sun's out, I can potentially get a fire with that as well. So I'll carry this on me as well, in the area I'm working in. Get my compass, my compass got my pocket as well. Also, I'll carry a GPS, just to back me up, if, I, if, if I'm having a navigationally... If I'm getting navigationally challenged and I don't, I'm not, I'm unsure where I am. I can just pull that out, and I could use the batteries as well potentially to get a fire as well. So I'll always carry that on me as well, just as a backup. Head torch, in case I'm out here at night with spare batteries. So if the batteries run out, I've got spare batteries there. A mosquito net. If I'm out in the woods and there's loads of mosquitoes, come and get it over my face. And that, that, what that doubles up to as well is a fishing net. So if I'm by streams or rivers, I can potentially catch fish with that as well. So I'll carry that on. Then I carry a water filtration device. So uh, anywhere in the world, I can literally get to a river, scoop and drink. No worries whatsoever. I know I'm not going to get any parasites, any viruses. And I know this filtration system is going to make me water clean. So I'll carry that on as well. And that is it. That's my day sack. And that's me, ready to rock. What here now is another spring trap. So what we're aiming at here is, is a ground a ground bed. That's what we're looking for. And I mainly pheasants around this area. And uh, what I've got in this area is, all I've got is a peg and notch, like so. Going up and going down. Off the tree, but it's sapling looks springy. Then what we've done is put like a cage around it. So when the bear comes over, we're going to be able to put bear feed in the middle. And as you can see, we're just... We've just tied all, all plants together, the bird come over, pops his head over and he starts pecking at the bird feed or worms or whatever bait we'll put in there. And what the idea is, because the snares, as you can see the snares all here, all around it, his head's in, he starts pecking on stuff, and then he knocks it and he flings up and pulls his neck. And that's the idea of it. And uh, that's another spring trap, thank you very much. But here now is a spear, this is more than another primitive weapon. As you can see we've knocked it down and we've put four spikes on it like so. And we've put bits of bamboo inside just to spread it out and we've sharpened them off. The reason why we just do that instead of having one, we've got more chance to catch an animal if you're fishing or you're throwing it. Or like I said, we can have it as a throwing spear like so. Boom. I imagine that as an animal now. What I'm doing now is here a dead fall trap here using a figure four method. So all I've got is three sticks here and I've shaved a little indent out of it and I've shaped it into a figure four, hence the name figure four. Uh, put a little spike on the end where I'll put your bait. And like I said, I'm going to use some dead force as well. This is fun. Now, this is a bit fiddly, so I'll pull down a bit slow. Right, so this way I'll put on a run, so I can say, here on animal run. I've got two stakes in the ground because I want the dead fall falling straight down. The animal comes along, starts gnawing on the bit of wood and gets squashed and that is it. That's all I've got to make in here, a spring trap as you can see. With a flexible branch, I've shaved everything off it so it gives me that spring back. As I've got here is a trigger, so all I've got is a bit of wood on the end. And I've put the snare on the other end like so. What I'm going to do now is I'll put two stakes in the ground, here like so. I'm going to get one wood with the stakes, make sure they've got hooks on it. One wood comes around like that. 
the string goes from behind it to the front. Then I'm going to put the other bit in place. Now as you can see here, I've got a bit of a platform. Put my snare on the platform. So what I'll do, this will be on a run. Bit of bait on here. Animal comes along, steps on my platform and what it's going to shoot off my tail. It'll be wrapped up in its snare, hung up there. The reason why I'll do these types of traps is because I don't want any other animals eating my rabbits. So if there's foxes in the area, I'll make a spring trap. What I'm going to do now is just go through a few ways of how you can get water and purify water. So what we may do is something called a solar still. All you're doing is digging a hole. I'm going to put a bucket in there so or, or a cup or a container so to collect water. Then I'm going to put a bag over it. And then the main thing about this is you want to keep it airtight. Right? You want to keep it airtight. And what we want to run this in direct sunlight. Sun hits it and it starts producing condensation. What I've put in there is loads of box around the container because it's full of moisture anyway. And you want to hit in a plastic bag, tap the plastic bag, hits the stone and drops into our container. Obviously we want this uh, wooden all the time, so I don't want to be pulling the lid off and getting back in. So if you get like a straw or a tube or something like that, or if you're a soldier, you've got a camel pack, take the straw out of your camel pack, put it into the container and you can sleep back and come over and suck it up. You're not going to get much water out of this, but if you can set a couple of these up, you're laughing. Right, so seeing what we've made here, this is a filtration system. Uh, what we found is a plastic bottle, put a couple of holes in at the bottom. Loads at the bottom of the charcoal, because obviously it disinfects the water. We've got moss in there, loads of iodine, which cleans the water. And we've used the cloth from our first field dressing to filter out all the big impurities. And what we'll do then, scoop up some water, and then just let that drip in. It's going to drip slowly through all the sediments, uh, through all the layers, and drop into our container. I'd still boil after that, but that's going to take most of the crap out of your water. It's a simple method put together if it's raining or whatever. We'll just put a bit of face field dressing around here. When it rains, it captures into this, and all it's just going to do is soak down and drip into the container. And that all is just a simple method of getting water. I'll just show you one more. Just another method of collecting rainwater. We've made a bag, put a little stone at the bottom into our container. The rain's going to hit here, and all comes down into one and drop into the container and that is it, pretty simple. I'm just going to take it back to our solar still a minute, I want to show you the inside of it. Right, so our solar still, like I said, I want to be all airtight, but I'll show you the inside of it now. So, just load with moss and I put a container in it. All the heat comes up, hits the plastic bag and drops into the container and that is it. And I hope you've got something out of Thank you very much for watching. Fields, fun exercise, doing a bit of survival training. Now, here's my dinner. What I've got. I've got pigeon. I caught this earlier on today. We shot it out on the trees. It's one pigeon. Absolutely lovely food. But this is my dinner. I'm starving. I'm tired. I've got a fire going. I'm just going to show you that quick how to prepare it. Why? Most of my friends are in Greece now, in Athens. I'm here in this nice woods with the fire going. The first thing you do, all right, is just twist its head off. Head off, that is it. And it's all about saving my knife at the end of the day, and I can do most of this without my knife. So, you always say, your knife, your life. Twist its wings. Oh, I could use some of this as well for even fishing, you know, for uh, for my hooks and that and the floats. So, I could use the feathers from that. So, none of it goes to waste. I could use the uh, feathers as well on this for insulin, put it in my clothing or on my bed. But all I want at the minute, because I'm hungry, is the breast. And like I said, I haven't used my knife once yet. And what I'm going to do now is. I'm going to put my thumb, so here's his belly, here's his back, I'm going to put my thumb down the front of him and down the back of him. And all I want to do is detach its breast from its back, and that is it. Like so. so far now like i said i still don't want to use my knife look at that nice breast here now i want to take the breast off the bone i want a lovely little uh, some steaks and all i do is push my thumb underneath the breast it's nice soft meat and i'm going to run down the bone like that. now i'm not going to let none of the rest of it go to waste i'll boil the rest of it because i want all the meat off it if i'm fully surviving but tonight i want a decent meal all the way down like so. 
Every time my thumb goes through, then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Just be careful because the bones are sharp as well. All the way down, all the way through. Like so, then all I want to do is nice and gently. the meat off the rest of the bone. There we go, look at that now, look at that breast coming off. Now I'm going to take it over the top of it. It should be looking like a pair of wings by the time I get it off. And as I said, look, I haven't used my knife whatsoever. The knife is your life. There's still some meat on there, I'll boil that up. But all they want is a nice breast meat. Yeah, I look at that for meat. Michelin style, on my grill, or on my fire. Thank you very much for watching. Right, Stephen Kelly here from Southwest Survival. What I'm going to teach you today is uh, making basically an improvised candle. And this is something I'll do back home before I've even went out in the woods, went out hill walking, so on and so forth. And it's so easy to get a fire going with it. So all I'm going to get is, uh, as you can see here, some makeup pads, something what your mum, your auntie and nana use to get rid of the makeup. And all I'm going to do at home, I'll get my candle burning. And all I'm going to do is melt candle wax on it. Like so. As you see it there dripping when it starts hardening up. A bit of mind, this only takes a few minutes. And I'll do this. And I'll do this well before I've even went on the ground. I don't have to do one side of it. I don't have to do the other side. It's getting better now. Oh. And as you can see, it's all starting to hard up now like a little candle. The last bit's on there. As you see here, yeah. all this bit, it's all getting hard now, let it dry off. And say so I wanted to light that now, I wanted to get a fire going, I could rip the insides of it up, fluff it out, like so. Get me flint the steel, and obviously this is going to burn a lot longer now because it's got wax on it, it's not just cotton wool. Like so there, and obviously if I was just lighting cotton wool or a pad on its own, so I'll get your pad now, bear in mind, I've done that first. I'll get a pad without cotton wool on, and I'll do exactly the same, and you'll see which one lasts a lot longer. Like I said, there's your improvised candle, ready to rock and roll. It's going to be a long, it's got wax in it. And watch the difference now. And as you see in here, it didn't take me long to make. Just melted candle packs on it and that is it. As you can see, seeing this shriveling up now into nothing. And that's still going to burn a lot longer. So there's a little tip you can take away with you from Southwest Survival. So yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Peace out. Where's my setup so far? There's my one man snow hole. And here, what else I've built around here? It's just a little sheltered area to get you out of the wind. Get a fire going. Cook some food. All I've done is dug into the snow. As you can see fire going on there. I'll pour a little spruce down here so I can chill, sit down. And that's it.